this is strange. All right, um, a little bit about the flexo industry because I know we have some mixed levels in this in this lecture, I guess, I don't know. Um, but the uh, flexo industry, it is, in 2017, it was a $850 billion industry. Um, it grows every year, and it's expected to be a, nine, a $980 billion industry by 2022. So um, I think it's like the third largest industry in the U.S., or printing in general is. And, um, right now, this is one of the major print processes, and it can, it's about 65 to 80% of print. Uh, pretty much if you come in contact with something that DuPont has helped print at least three times a day. Uh, you'd be surprised if you have come in contact with something. Um, the good thing about print, uh, Plexo printing is that you can print on pretty much anything and you can have a finish in line at high speeds. Uh, a lot of litho and gravure is switching to Flexo just because it's um, cheaper on the short run side. Um, where gravure, you know, you have to get a lot of impressions out to really make it worth it. Um, and then new technologies and innovations, ESCO really works with us. I don't know how many times for this presentation, but it's changing all the time. There's new developments. Everyone's trying to be the best. Everyone's trying to have the best, the best thing. It's a lot like uh, just technology in general. You want the next update so that you as a print shop can stay on top of the market. So again, for you guys who don't know quite how the Flexo, uh, how to make a plate, I'm in the pr uh, DuPont plate making side. So I basically tell people that I make giant stamps. So this is the process that we go through. On the uh, front end, you back expose your plate. Then you image it through ESCO's CDI, digital imager. Uh, you then uh, main expose it. Now ESCO light bed exposes and main exposes at the same time. You know, again, the technologies that just came out, I think, last year or so. Um, so now I'm working with customers to develop our plate piece of equipment. Then we also you have thermal processing, which is what you guys do here that's removing through heat, pressure, and time. Solvent processing, which is a washout, kind of like your water, but it's solvent. California has a lot more rules on that, so it's a little bit different here. Uh, but you, I believe, you use water washout. Yeah. Um, kind of the same process. DuPont doesn't do that. We did do that, and then we got rid of it. Um, and then you main expose, or you post expose light finish. If you, do, and then, oh, well, you, you dry it if you're doing solvent. It takes about two and a half hours and then you light it finish and uh, post expose. So this is kind of what a floor would look at. Like. That's, a, um, that's a solvent processor. Those things can be as long as it can get really crazy. And this is our Asia Pacific office. Um, it's kind of shows you the layout. This is what it would look like in a high production facility. Um, some places would have two thermal some would have three imagers. I've been to one. They, they can't have downtime. So I have a question for y'all. When you think of jobs in the flexo industry, what are the first things that come to your mind? Just go ahead, guys. <laughs> OK. Packaging. But more specific, like if you were like, I'm looking into jobs, you have something like a plate maker, right? Or you have a uh, press room operator. But a lot of people think that it just they just if you're not touching the plate yourself, this is your career stop um, with Flexo. When in actuality, these are all of the jobs that I could think of, and there's more that can actually be uh, with the Flexo industry. The Flexo industry. You have plate makers, press operators, finance, um, research and developer, screening developers. Uh, you have sales reps, technical application specialists, which is what I am, color managers, plus press room managers, Marketing and forecast. Now you say, well, anybody could do marketing forecast. Well, uh, the people who come from, in DuPont, who come from the outside of the industry, really struggle with what? Because they don't know, I'm forecasting what? What is, what is this? What is this giant piece of rubber? What are you talking about? They don't understand. They're like, can you explain? I'm like, all right. So they basically have to go through like, a rigorous course of a year of training just so that they can be marketing managers and in forecasting and things like that. So it really does help to have a background. And so thinking in Flexo doesn't need to stop at just plate making. Um, so what am I? I'm a technical application specialist. I'm kind of, if you guys listen to Hannah, 
I have a very similar lifestyle and career to her. Um, I basically make sure that our plates are optimized and work the best for the customer. There are over, I want to say, 20 different product types of plates, and then just for our company, and then over 10 different thicknesses, and they all run differently. If a customer used, used EFX, which is our easy flat top dot fast plate, and they wanted to switch to solvent, I would have to come back in, I would have to re-fingerprint all their presses, I would have to do benchmarks, color optimization. I basically have to make sure everything's working. Also, um, which I'll talk about in a second, we also do a lot of problem solving. But this is just some of the products we do. LaCroix, I'm sure all of you guys know LaCroix now. It's like the new thing. <laughs> um, spam, which you guys know, but it probably isn't the new thing. Uh, we also print a lot of Spam. And then uh, Tetra Pak, which isn't so big here because it's really not recyclable. But uh, Tetra Pak is a really big one that we also print. Um, pretty much travel everywhere. Um, this is just a list of places that I've traveled that I kind of came up with. Um, I come, I mean, I go to LA all the time. I go to San Francisco a lot. I came here. Uh, been to St. Louis, Cincinnati, Chicago, Charlotte, Raleigh, Rochester, New York, New York City, Los Angeles, Napa, which is cool. Got to go to Sonoma because we print there. So it was a nice weekend last weekend that I had in Napa. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, Greenville, South Carolina, Asheville, Atlanta. Des Moines, Iowa. I even go um, to Germany. I'm going to Columbia, South America next week. I'm going to, I went to Punta Cana, uh, and I'll be going to Mexico in the next step in Canada. So it's, it's honestly everywhere. There's only six people in my position, and we do not have a territory because we are so specialized in what we do for our team. Um, there's people who are screening. That's me. I make sure that your screens and that you're really printing, getting the highest density, getting the best detail, uh, which it, it's a lot more on the, the forefront technical side. Then we also have people that, um, if the equipment goes down, if there's something weird to solve for the thermal equipment, they go out and they're like, hey, this is what's happening. Then we have people that are more on the press side. If something's looking weird, and it's come down to the, the plate of the press. We, uh, Brad Gaskew, who's one of my co counterparts, he'll go out and do that. Um, so we can't really have a territory. Uh, which, you know, makes my job exciting. Young, single, why not? You know. <laughs> All right. So just some of the stuff that I come in contact with. It's really funny. We're still to boosting glasses all the time. Um, this right here is a doctor blade, and if you look right here, it kind of indents, right? That's the arches of an M printing so many McDonald's bags. Right, so it just wore out, and they're like, we don't know what's going on, something, it doesn't look right. Well, I was like, well, you might want to change your doctor blade. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's really what I go, they, they just don't know. I come out there and I go, fix your doctor blade, and then I fly back home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that crazy. Um, sometimes I'll go out to customers and I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you guys, this was a customer I went to, this was from my report, I just pulled the pictures. So if you, if you look right here, we have a little bit of an artifact coming in, and they're like, oh, it's your plates, something's wrong. It's in here, we have this weird blip, and then we have this, this chunk in the plates. Again, this is all, the customer thinks it's all my fault, right? I come in and it's, it's your fault, what have you done to these plates? Fix it, okay, all right. So what I do is I come in, I kind of like assess the situation, I say, why don't you show me everything, show me around, what's going on? They show me around. Okay. Micrometer. A micrometer measures your relief of your plates. Why is the relief important? Because if it's too shallow, you're going to print the floor, and if it's too low, you're going to have lean dots, call them drunk dots, and they're just going to fall over, and your print's going to look like that. So they're like, no, we only have a hand micrometer. It's like, so you're making over 50 plates a day, and you're measuring by hand, which has so much variability. And he's like, yeah, well, if you push on it, that really gives you a good reading. And I was like, oh, so now people are pushing. So we have to account for other, other people pushing. Okay, awesome. He's like, no, 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 I promise it's always 22 relief. Really. I, I promise, 2022 relief. Really. Okay, yeah. Do you mind if I take these plates home with me and, and I measure them back at the CTC? Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. Our relief was 13. <laughs> so, yeah, if our relief is 13, we are literally printing the floor. And they're over and on the on just so that they can get all of their details. 
And when you look up, this is actually raised on the plate because you're going to have some raised You're not going to remove all of that polymer. But that's why you can make sure you good relief. So that's why we were getting that weird artifact line in it. And said, hey, if you just move your, if you increase your back exposure time, uh, I think that, or decrease your back exposure time. Wait a minute. Increase, raise, decrease. Decrease your back exposure time, you should be OK. So that's what they did. The zip in their, their plate, and I said, How, when's the last time you got your ESCO unit serviced? So, well, we get, we get it serviced. We get it serviced. I was like, OK, well, when's the last time? Seven months ago. I was like, all right. Well, ESCO recommends that you get it serviced every six months. I was like, did you realize that your exhaust fan has a red light, meaning that it, your filter's full? Oh, no, no. I didn't realize that. I was like, OK. I went up to the sky, and I looked down where the drum is. You see all this right here is just bits of polymer that were getting sucked in through the exhaust because their Kongsberg was cutting their plates, leaving literal plate polymer around. And then it was rotating on the drum, getting stuck on the surface of the plate. And then when they went to thermal process it, it was literally embedding it into the plate. This is that zoomed in. Yeah, so then they're like oh, printing on the plate. I was like, oh yeah, you're adding pieces of polymer to your plate. So they cleaned that out, crisis alerted. Everything's good. Um, so that's kind of just what I do on a day to day. This is like a real life customer situation. Uh, we print cool things. Like I was saying, this is, um, anybody know what this is? Um, you guys are probably not a huge But this is um, <laughs> Michelob Ultra. So lots and lots of Michelob Ultra printed with DuPont plates. All right. So about me, I enjoy design problem solving. Uh, like I said, graphic communication at Clemson University. Very, very, very similar to what you guys do here. It's literally the same. <laughs> I actually do a lot of web design and uh, development, stuff like that, graphic design. We are more design so that you can print well. And your, your print only looks as good as your design does, but your design needs to kind of come from you really putting time and effort into it. We do have a web design class and a photography class, but that's not the meat of our program. Um, which I'll talk about that more in a second. And then I got my master's in packaging science. Um, talk about that more in a second too. But then I was a, uh, now I'm a technical service consultant or applications consultant for the last year and a half. Um, I really, I told y'all what I do. And then I work at the headquarters in Wilmington, Delaware. So I work in the headquarters in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, <laughs> I'm never there. And then uh, I travel weekly to cu customers and these are also some other things I do. I do do training. Uh, press trials, I do audits, making sure equipment's correct. I should honestly audit you guys while I'm here. Um, but uh, that's just a little bit of what I do. Um, so how did I get here? Where, who, who wakes up and is like, today I'm going to be you know, a technical applications consultant? Nobody. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so Clemson requires you to do two internships. You have to take a semester off and do a full internship. And you have to do one over the summer. Um, honestly, I don't think you guys have to, correct? No, you don't have to. Do it anyway. Take that summer, like have them lined up, get, get it going, because it will change your perspective on what you do. Um, so I work for Packaging Corporation of America. They're the fourth largest corrugated uh, company in, in the US. Um, so I was their graphic designer. I, wanted, I woke up and I wanted to be a structural designer. I wanted to design, that's what I wanted to do. I went to Clemson. I was like, I was going to Clemson regardless of the program. That's where I wanted to go. My parents went there. I was going there. So I was like, oh, let's do industrial design. They don't have that. Oh, let's do graphic, graphic design. They don't have that. What is this graphic communications thing? I guess we're doing this. It says graphics. Let's do it. So I go in. I find out they have a packaging science minor. Um, and so then I add that on, right? So I wanted to design liquor bottles for some reason. That's what I thought I wanted to do. So this was the best foot forward, guys. This was, this was it. So I did six months at PCA. I designed some really cool things. These were in Walmarts and uh, Food Lines, which I don't know if you'll have the Food Line, but this is what that was um, for Archway. I just did concepts. So this was actually like, this would come in on your pallet, this like point of purchase display, and you could roll it off and put it into different sections. Didn't get picked up, but still kind of cool. Um, this was for Family Dollar. They wanted a display that could be cosmetics. It was a pencil originally for back to school, but they wanted to be able to use the same structure and make it in all different seasons. So I did this. Yeah. You see the pencil and the elf? <laughs> He's pretty freaking cute. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, okay, so that was PCA. Did I love it? Hated it. I hated it. I was like, this sucks. It was six months in. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, there were other people there. They thought this was it for them. They loved it. But you aren't designing for you. You don't design what you think looks good. You're designing for what other people want. Um, and so I would design something like I thought it looked amazing. I think I designed the, just the purple one. And then they're like, no, we want flowers on it and make some wave things. And I was like, this looks awful. But OK. So you just have to keep designing for other people, which can get exhausting because your creati creativity feels stipend. And it's not, it's not that fun um, in the end. For me, this is for me. Everyone's different. So I was like, crap, now what? OK, so package, I'm not designing liquor bottles anymore, I guess. What am I going to do? Um, I worked for a company called Classic Graphics. They're located on the East Coast. They are a offset shop. I worked as an in-house marketing manager because I was like, I'm going to do marketing. This was my three-month internship. So I was like, I'll just do marketing and design for in-house. So I did, designed a lot of their promo materials, things like that. Once again, I found myself very bored. And I was like, oh, great. What now? I'm screwed. Um, so I was like, all right, I, I liked the branding side of things. Maybe I'll go into branding. Well, Clemson doesn't offer branding. I couldn't find any jobs for branding, so what I do, I design my own website. Um, I created a website of everything that I knew and everything that I had done at Clemson. I wish I had internet so I could scroll. This is still live. It's emilyairsportfolio.com. Look it up if you want. My legal name is Emily. I was named after Clifford, but I go by Allie. Emily was that, I know. Um, but anyway, so then I, um, I created this website and I started freelance designing. I did logo design. This is kind of what the page looked on if you clicked on my logo. And these are some of the logos I created. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Five of these are actually still used. Well, this company went out of business. Four of these are still used today. One of them was just a concept that I created in class. Um, I made the decision from the first class I went into to design a brand. And then I carried that through all of my classes in school. So that way I had this giant portfolio that looked like a company at the end of it. Um, that was just my personal choice. You don't have to do that. I don't know if you guys are allowed to do that. Um, so this was that, that right there. This was packaging classes, my branding. And this is where I decided, oh, maybe I do want to do branding. Uh, lucky number was the concept that you did a quiz online and it gave you your number and that's the type of wine you would like. So bottle number two is going to be your flavor profile. I should honestly make this a real thing. Um, so that was like lucky number. So it was grapes, but numbers instead. And like it went with the whole dark. And this is the, the theme I went with. So then from that, I was like, I think I really do like branding. Well, I got picked up on a, link at, um, on a LinkedIn. And they were like, hey, we're in Charlotte. Would you like to do our rebranding? We kind of like what you have so far. I was like, OK, sure. So throughout college for a whole year and a half of the end of junior year, well, I did a super semester. So for two years, I worked for this company called Apperson. They are a Scantron company. They do bubble sheets. <laughs> I rebranded all of their things. On the left is what they started with, and on the right is what I finished with. We recolored. We did everything. Um, yeah, it wasn't that hard to make it look better. But uh, <laughs> this is what we got. Um, I liked this at first. I thought it was really great. I was about it. Um, I started designing uh, portfolio books for, to be able to send out to customers. Like my thing was I was going to literally, or not to customers, but to jobs, I was going to mail my resume with a portfolio book to everybody I wanted to work for. I was so excited about it. But then I started doing it some more and some more, and it got boring. And I was like, great, what am I doing? I don't know what to do. Like, I remember sitting in our senior seminar class, and I took a quiz, and it was like, these are the top four, five industries in flex or in graphic communications. It was uh, marketing, sales, pressman operator, uh, designer, something else. And it was like, if you scored at 70% or higher, you would enjoy what you were doing. I scored a 50 in every single one. And I was like, I raised my hand. And I was like, I think I need to switch majors. He's like, you're a super senior. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> and I was like, OK. So I was like, I guess I'm ditching graphics altogether. I'm out. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. So I applied for Gallo Wines. I, like, got it to the third interview. I was um, talking. And we have a week like this, kind of, but it's more just for Intern Employer Day. And I was speaking to a bunch of industry leaders prompt to about my internship experience. And I was like, this is it. I'm done after this. I, like, walk off stage. And Chip Tonkin, who's the director of our program, walks up to me. He goes, what do you think about getting your, uh, your master's in packaging science? And I was like, no, I'm out. And he was like, 
uh, he's like, why not? I was like, I don't want to print again. I don't want to do any more science. I don't want to look at another press. I'm out. Like, I'm out. I call my dad. I'm like, Dad, they just offered me a full ride and packaging. He's like, you're taking it. I was like, no, I'm not. He's like, you're taking it or you're not coming home? And I was like, <laughs> got it. <laughs> so, so I take it, right? I take, I take the, jo- the, the master's and it changed my life. I ended up doing my thesis on antimicrobial coatings on the inside of polymer films to help uh, alleviate listeria, chances of listeria. So what did I do? Science and printing. <laughs> Great, yeah, and I picked that. Uh, I don't know why, but I did. And I was working on the OMET, which is a giant flexo press. I was printing this coating that I developed. And at the end, I was like, oh, maybe I need to be more technical. I was like, oh, hmm, okay. Well, this is changing everything again. So I'm like, maybe, okay, I need to go into technical. Well, I'm, I'm waiting tables at the time. And I wait on like, kind of like it was an event like this, but like all the teachers took out the customers and it was like this big thing. And I was like, give me, give, give me that table. And they were like, okay, you go take it. No one else wants it. So I go up there and I'm waiting on this party and I was they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to be customer facing, problem solving. I want to be traveling and I want to like constantly be doing something different because I will get bored. And I was like telling about my background and one of my coworkers at now said, uh, don't make your hobby your job. It will get old. And I love creativity and I love doing this stuff. But he was like, that's what I learned. And so he goes, here is my card, apply. I apply and I get the job with DuPont. So here I am. Um, that's just kind of my path to show you guys that it's really important to, to kind of figure out what you want to do now because it's just going to really make you happier in the end. I just think. Um, like he said, don't make your, your art your passion. My website's still up. I still do freelance design. I do web design freelance. I do, so I mean, it's a nice little supplemented income. Instead of doing Mary Kay, I do web design, you know? Um, <laughs> so this is, this is kind of where I've come today. Um, I really enjoy it. The, uh, I, talking to customers every day is just something that I really enjoy because obviously I, I like to talk. Um, and you get to meet so many people. I'm never walking in and it's the same thing. Sometimes I walk in and I'm like, I have no idea what you guys did. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know what I'm doing. Pick up the phone, use my text, and I text my coworkers, the other five, and they all say, oh, we've seen this before. It's this, this, and this. Just check this. And I'm like, huh, okay, cool. So, I mean, it's really, it keeps you on your toes. It's, it's really exciting. But I just want you guys to realize that if you're in Flexo or if you, think that printing is is boring there's a lot more to it than just making plates so any any questions anything yeah no so I'm actually moving home and when I'm back to Charlotte in the next two months uh, because I only two three of them work in the headquarters and three are remote four are remote three are remote yeah three are remote and so um, we it, it, it kind of depends. We have people who are from Wilmington, Delaware, love Wilmington, Delaware, and just kind of works so if that's their home base. So they work in like the headquarters and like kind of do more of the uh, complaint problem solving, which is like the fuzz and that kind of stuff. And we have more like the people who are out in the field, they just travel a lot more, which I will, since I travel so much as it is, I'm only in the office four times this month, three times this month. There's no point in me living there. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I, I don't like to say that because Brad Gaskey, who works with us, didn't have the master's degree, but he worked for four years for the Clemson, like the Sunoco Institute before getting this job. Having the master's definitely gave me that leg up to be like, because I'm young and it was definitely, that's definitely still a problem, but it was definitely a problem, but I had to like prove myself through my knowledge and be like, listen, I have a master's. Uh, and I think it did help in that sense. Um, it also helps me, I think, in a lot of what I do because I walk, work in a lot of films and my thesis was in films, so I know a lot about like linear density polyethylenes, linear low density polyethylenes, PET, PP. I know what they do, simple things, what, what needs to be thrown and treated, so like, that kind of helps me, I would say. Yeah. You know. What would you say, um, you work for DuPont, which is obviously a large oh, yeah. corporation. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a great question. Um, so within the DuPont umbrella, there's everything. We do, 
We were the inventors of spandex. I mean, you can thank us for that. Um, <laughs> uh, Tyvek, nylon, this, those types of things. So this is, it's a lot bigger than just printing. As a matter of fact, we were kind of like that weird group that didn't really know what to do with, but it makes so much money for them that they're like, okay, we'll keep you. Um, so within my group, it's pretty small. I would say that you guys outnumber my group. Um, and that part makes it feel very small and like a family. It doesn't make it feel like I have to like go up to the president on the 18,000th floor and be like, hello. It's very much just so where I'm, I'm working in an intimate setting. I, I literally text my boss all the time and I text her, his boss all the time. Um, but as far as disadvantages, I would say that things that that you're just like, that's so dumb, why can't that just get approved? Well, that can't get approved because it has to actually go through the stair steps and it has to go to the higher ups. That part, you don't have that ambiguity of like, hey, we need a new piece of equipment or we need to get this new ESCO blank, blank, blank. Well, we have to wait for this because this has to happen and that has to happen because of corporate, you know? So that part of it is a little bit of a disadvantage whereas you work for a smaller company and they just are like, yeah, we need, a, we need it, let's get it. That's, that's a little bit different, but the benefits are great. My 401k is great. I have great options like that, which might not seem like matters now, but it will matter. Trust me. <laughs> Insurance is expensive. <laughs> so yeah, these are kind of advantages. Anything else? How many of you guys do want to go into design or like a marketing design, kind of like what I, my internships were in? The show hands. Oh yeah, so all of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely something that I would, encourage you guys to do an internship in. Um, if you want to look at my portfolio, that's great. You guys can do that. But um, I think being in it, will, you will feel like if you're like me or not. Um, and I don't want to say, I, I hope none of you guys have that experience because it was definitely like a, oh my gosh, what am I going to do uh, feeling. But in the end, it was the best thing that I did for myself in college. So. And travel. There's really cool places, you know, like East Coast. Come work for me. <laughs> yeah, we do have we do take interns if you're interested. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes, but it wasn't our fault. <laughs> uh, that sounds. There's uh, when you're printing um, these high quality graphics, we're using screens that allow you to really lay down a lot of ink. Um, and their ink dry times and their, the, their ink wasn't made for what we had just given them. Um, so it was ghosting and picking and we were just like, at the end of our four color, our white plate was yellow. And we were, they were just like, it's the plate, it's the plate, it's the plate. I was like, it's the ink. And that happens a lot. So it's a lot of times talking with the customer being like, all right, now let's go talk to inks and let's go talk to uh, sticky back and analogs and this and that. And we all talk in a little group. I have them all on speed dial and we're like, no, Joe, it's not the roller. Well, no, it's not this. And, and then we finally have to figure it out. But normally, normally if we go in between like, maybe sometimes I have to like fly one of my counterparts out and they, they figure it out with me, but we, we get it figured out. Because once you, there's 20,000 variables in, in Flexo printing, but once you really kind of get an eye for it, you can figure it out pretty quick what's going on. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Did this spark any interest for anybody? Like, are you like, oh, that's kind of cool? Maybe Hannah's did too, you know? <laughs> Come on down! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, this sounds a little a little more nerdy on my part, but um, uh, do you, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with screening technologies. Like I was saying, I'm considered the specialty screening. There's these two screenings that are called Bellissima and then the Control Wizard, um, and I was helping implement the first ever Print Control Wizard on wide format for a customer, um, and they were down in Texas and they wanted to do PCW wide format, which is. I mean, we were trying to hold dots that are like smaller. I can't even see them. And I remember like sitting there. I had been in their plant for like eight hours or eight days, and, like 12 hour days coming in and out. Are we going? Are we not? What's happening? And then when it finally printed, which seems so nerdy, but this tiny little dot held on this plate, 
I, I thought I was gonna cry. It was like, <laughs> it was like, the, oh my gosh, I'm such a nerd. Like if you would have told me that I was crying years ago, I'd be like, this girl's weird. Like, <laughs> like, I, but I, mean, I remember sitting in my flex out class and like working on those machines that you guys have in there. And I was like, this sucks. I'm never gonna need this again. I'm never gonna do this again. I'm just getting the grade. It was my lowest grade at Clemson. It was, was flex out printing. And, and now I go back and talk to his class. He's like, remember how much you paid for this class? I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> but I mean, things that you might not, you, you start to fall in love with the things that you, that you start working in because you become good at it. And when you become good at it, you become excited about it and you want to expand your knowledge. So something you might not think you love now, you probably won't. <laughs> Pass out my cards. Are looking for interns, um, but me? How do I inter generate an internship? Oh, yeah, guys, fun stuff. Um, there's multiple ways. A lot of times, you can go to the program. They can reach out. Um, I would reach out to. Programs that have done internships. Oh, do you want? Call me. <laughs> no, for real. I hire the interns. Um, so I, we, you pretty much just, uh, you, you would reach out to me, email, shoot me an email. Hey, loved what you said, or shoot me in LinkedIn. Hey, this was really cool. Just wondering, like, what your internships are. Um, I mean, you will have to come to Wilmington, Delaware, but. It's tw 40 minutes from Philadelphia, which is really freaking cool, okay? And then you're only an hour and a half from New York City, which is also really cool, and you can take a bus for $12, so. <laughs> yeah, so if you ever, I mean, all my interns go to New York at least three times. Yeah. Um, it's suggested that you take your Flexo class here, uh, just because, you'll come into it not being like, what is this thing? Uh, and you'll kind of know what you're doing. Um, but I have had students that have literally just started, it's their sophomore year. So some are going into sophomore year and they have no idea what they're doing. And by the end of it, they're like, can't wait to take my flexo class because now I'm going to be a sleep journey. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, it really is kind of how it works out. Um, my interns um, are normally very uh, self-sufficient. They have a lot of, I don't micromanage. I give you a task and I'll normally be like in California and I'm like, hey, are you doing this? Is this getting done? Yeah, it, it's already done. Do you mind if I leave at three? I'm like, sure, if it's done and you sent it, send me the confirmation, you can leave at three. It's very much you manage yourself because that's how the industry is. I'm not gonna babysit, I don't babysit and that's how I think interns should be run. I and mean, they work for me directly. I'm not very high strong as you can tell. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's, it's definitely a, a pretty cool opportunity. We only hire out of Clemson guys because they're the only ones who come. So. I heard there's some competition with Clemson over here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, so I think it's really, and we do pay about $5 an hour. But, and most of my interns do Airbnb for like months. So they get like a, they get like a five month Airbnb or three month Airbnb and that's how they do it. Which is like $600. So you're going to be making some. There's not. Bye. <laughs> From Delaware, I send it to my work. Plus, don't tell anybody that. I don't want to get audited. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. Flat. Go ahead. Minimum three months, as long as you want to make it. We really push for make a semester off like I did. But it, you learn so much more and it looks different. I've never had someone who's like, oh, you took a semester off to work in the industry. And normally they're like, that's not going to scare you. I know that y'alls are pretty much tasked like ours are, but that's kind of what we do. I will hire summer interns. I just ask for a long summer, so you, you don't really get like that. Can I take two weeks here and then two weeks in the year? <laughs> but I mean, having a name, like a lot of like Esco, like DuPont, like those big names when you're going into the industry really do help.